Am I just thinking too much like an old man? Or is that a legitimate concern? We're back here in my garage again, and one of these days, I will do videos from the eyeball room again. But the whole point of this channel is kind of what I have going on. Man, you hear that reverb in here? Can you hear that? Maybe you can hear that through the camera. I've actually made this video a few times, but I keep leaving this part out of it, and then I redo it, and then I'll leave that part out of it, and so on and so forth. So anyways, 302 right here. The cheapest Marketplace 302 that I could find, anyways. I've got it all cleaned up and painted. Actually primed it this time. Uh, the last engine I did, I didn't prime it, and the paint started chipping off pretty quick. So hopefully that will work. I need to hone it, and then I'll have to clean it again. Then I'll put the cam in it, the crank, uh, check the oil clearances on the crank. Kind of go from there. My $500 budget is blown. I am way over, like not double or anything, but yeah, I'm, I'm way over. And I'm not done getting things. I could have ran this in the configuration it was in and used the E6 heads and not the heads I already had, but I've already put work into these heads, so I mean, I'm not going to let them sit around any longer. And with the valve springs on them, I just got another cam, you know, that Lunati. It's like an E cam, but it's uh, higher lift and a little bit less duration. But I could have ran it with the E heads and the, or the, the E6 heads and the cam that was in there. If I would have done the bare minimum to get this engine ru excuse me, running in the configuration it was in, 100% stock, E6 heads, the stock cam that was in it, I would have still had to replace the oil, oil pan. I've got the hiccups, I'm sorry. I would have had to replace the hiccups, <laughs> the oil pan, oh my, to a front sump pan. And I would have had to replace the timing cover for the dipstick uh, in the timing cover in the front. And I would have had to replace that fuel injected intake with the intake uh, and carburetor that I have. I got another carburetor, a 750 uh, vacuum secondary, which is it's probably too big for this, but I got it really cheap, and he gave me this uh, those fuel lines, you know, the dual dual feed lines. They that they have a, they leak, but maybe I can get it not to leak. But he told me, or he gave it to me for free, or at, in the in the deal, he gave me that fuel line. And I don't know if he knows this or not, but that fuel line that he gave me is for a forty one fifty configuration where it's a little bit you know the metering blocks thicker on the secondary so it's a little bit fur further out so it won't work on a 4160 vacuum secondary but for the price I paid for it that was I mean that new was half the price so I got another one I'm gonna sell that one on eBay or whatever also my distributor I was told that this distributor that I was given I mean I was given it for free so I can't complain about it but that it was a new old stuff golly I got Sorry about the hiccups. I don't know. I have really haven't drank enough water today. So I don't know if that's, I, I just got home from work. So it's one o'clock in the morning. So this distributor, I was told it was a new old stock distributor, brand new, just old. I pulled the cap off and it has a, uh, it has been ran. It has a made in USA rotor on it though. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those in my lifetime. Maybe I have. Um, but one thing I bought used, and even for me, this is a crazy thing to buy used. I bought used lifters. Isn't that weird? I mean, they're not even that expensive. But the issue that I had was at my regular job, I've had a lot of bad luck with new parts lately. Not lifters, because if I had a lifter fail, I would replace the engine. But... I have had three or four bad fuel pumps. I'm gonna to try to put a picture or video I have of a fuel pump that I had most recently, but brand new out of the box wasn't any good. Now this one, the most recent one, 
was looked like it was damaged in shipping, but the box was fine. It was just when I took it out, it was like looked like it had been dropped from a 15-story building. And then my coworker had an alternator that the pulley was messed up on right out of the box once again. You might would think it was damaged in shipping, but the box was fine. Then there was a oh, two water pumps. Yeah, two water pumps. One of them the hub assembly came off of the front of the, uh, like where it's pressed on, came off the front enough to make the belt squeal. And the driver told me about it. So I was able to fix that before it was a major failure. The second one popped all the way off, fan hit the radiator, had to get towed back. Both of these water pumps had less than 5,000 miles on them. This was also a new radiator. This is where the rod that comes from the frame up to the side of the radiator, if you work on diesel trucks, you know what I'm talking about. This is where it bolts to on the radiator itself. And it was actually a quarter inch too high and too far forward. And I tried to pry it just to get it into, uh, into place. And as you can see, the weld broke with no penetration whatsoever brand new radiator i had to break off the other weld move it back um about an eighth of an inch back and an eighth of an inch down to be able to get it lined up so i trust a factory motorcraft part with some miles on it more than i do an aftermarket part at this time right now so that's why i bought that um, the other thing I was going to talk about, I polished the crank. Looks pretty good. I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, last couple of cranks I polished, they, I couldn't really get them out to that mirror finish. And this one turned out good. Maybe not perfect, because, I mean, it's not going to be perfect without taking it to a machine shop. But I'm not going to a machine shop, because the last machine shop, when I, the one I took the 289 to, screwed me big time and oh that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother video so without taking to a machine shop i think i got it looking pretty good and the cam bearings i okay let me be honest with you i did not even want to look at the cam bearings i was like trying to not look at the cam bearings at all because i didn't want to have to put cam bearings in it and if I would have had to put cam bearings in it, I would have bought the tool and did it myself. I put cam, I have put cam bearings in before. But the cam bearings actually look good. So I'm not replacing them. So I'm basically, my little freshen up $500 job here has turned into replacing basically everything except the crankshaft, the piston rod assemblies, and the cam bearings. So what are you gonna do? Only thing I have to get is a rotor, a, set of points and a distributor cap, a few fittings and some hoses and some of the miscellaneous stuff like that, fuel filter, and I think that's gonna be it. And yes, points ignition. I, I've never had any trouble with points ignition and I've had a lot of points ignition systems in my life mine and my friends i put points in my friends vehicles i all this stuff on the internet about you have to constantly be adjusting them and all this i don't know where the hell that comes from um but it's not true i'll tell you that that's something maybe your distributor is worn out or something is making that gap not be consistent. I don't know what, you know, exactly that might be, but something else is going on. That's just a symptom of something else, uh, like a root cause. Like that's a symptom of a deeper root failure if you're having to do it all the time. Cause I mean, I know I'm not an old guy that's been dealing with points all my life, but I've dealt with points a lot. Never once have I had to constantly be adjusting points up. The points I put in my fair lane when I first bought the car, to, just to get it running, because it had been sitting, you know, for 20 years, 21 years. Uh, I drove the car like 20,000 miles, and I never touched them once 
in the in-between time. I mean, the car was stock then, but it fired up like, just like that, every time. And I daily drove this car for a while, and then sometimes I didn't, and it sat for a couple months, and even when it was sit for a couple months, bam, it started right back up. So I don't know where the hell that comes from, but it's not true. Don't be afraid of uh, points and condensers. I may go electronic ignition eventually. I sure don't want no HEI distributor. Although they are a very good system. I put one in my dad's F-350 with a 460 in it. I put one in Jake's truck, 352. They are the ugliest distributor in the world. And it just looks so awful in there. And per my, personal, my personal opinion. And I've told, which of course my dad, he doesn't care. He, he had a lot of trouble out of, this, uh, out of this truck. And I'll tell you another thing on those HEI distributors, how I have ran them personally. They say that you only have to use that one wire and you hook it straight to power and oh, there you go. I run it through a fuse and a relay. That's just a way to me that makes more sense. On my dad's F-350, I just ran it through the uh, stock ignition relay circuit. On my uh, on uh, Jake's F-100, I ran it through a, oh, I added a relay for it and wired it to the switch to, uh, it's wired correctly. No, no, I don't do no hack jobs, but I don't want to my car. Big drawback is you can't run a, you, need, you have to run a smaller air cleaner because it's so big. But it is a great system. I guess maybe on the Chevrolet G or the GM stuff, it's not that big a deal because it's the, you know, the distributor is in the back so you don't really have to see it. But when you're looking at a Ford engine and it's, it's right there in the front looking at you, it just makes you want to throw up, at least me. And I'm not a brand loyalist, by the way. Some people may think I am a Ford brand loyalist. I do like Fords, but I like all kinds of stuff. Volkswagen, I had a lot of Volkswagens. Oh. G-bodies, I like G-bodies, all G-bodies. Some people only like the Monte Carlo SS and the Grand Nationals, the T-types, which I like all those cars too. But I don't care if it's a Cutlass, a Grand Prix, a uh, Regal, a T-Type Regal, a Grand National, a Monte Carlo LS, SS. I love that body style of car. And I also like the um, WS6 Trans Ams. All the LS, I love LS. I've been to LS Fests. Uh, I've probably been to, I don't know, eight, at least eight LS Fests. Uh, 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 at least eight LS Fest. <laughs> Love LS Fest. I also like the old, the old Mopars, like the GNXs, the Roadrunners, and the Darts. I think maybe I've covered everything I wanted to talk about. I'm about to hone this engine, clean it again, which includes tapping all the bolt holes out. Go ahead and tap all the bolt holes, or thread chase them. Just clean, clean them out you'll be happy that you did. When you do that, you can get the good, uh, a really good feel on the torque. It's not, I don't know how to describe it, but do it. It just makes everything flow better when you're putting it together. Oh, I gotta sandblast the valve covers and the oil pan and paint them before I put them on. One thing I was gonna ask is, do you guys trust these things? Let me, let me go find it, what I'm talking about. Okay, I don't know what I did with it, but the plates that go on the, where the carburetor goes for lifting, would you trust that on an aluminum intake? Because uh, I've used that before on a cast iron intake, it's, and that seemed to be okay, but I just think it's going to pull those threads out of that aluminum intake. Am I just thinking too much like an old man, or is that a legitimate concern? Let me know. Like the video, subscribe, or hey, dislike the video if you don't like it. And if you don't, if you dislike the video, comment and say why you didn't like the video. Is it because my uh, circuit breaker box to my house is open behind me? Is it because I got this fresh haircut that's really sweet and you're jealous? Is it because you don't like all the stickers on my mini fridge? 
whatever it might be. Anyways. See you next time.